Adobe has just released a new Lightroom update and we did get quite a bunch of new tools. Lens Blur, HDR Optimization and Point Color are the ones that stand out the most. So let's go through them real quick. The biggest feature is the new Lens Blur tool. Using this you can create some pretty realistic looking blur and even change the bouquet shape. It even got its very own panel in the develop menu. So with this image you can already see we do have some blur in the background but we can enchant it some more using this new tool. All we need to do is first we need to check the apply box right here. This process will take a while depending on your system but once it's done you can play around with different settings. First we do have the blur amount. Setting it back to zero obviously will give us no blur whatsoever but bringing it up you can see quite a difference. Now of course raising sliders all the way up to 100 most of the times is not a good idea but in this case it actually looks pretty good except for a few spots right around her hair. It, it doesn't look that great. However if we tone down the blur amount we can get some pretty realistic looking results. So something around 50 looks pretty good to me. Now if you want to change the bouquet all we need to do is click on that little arrow here and this bouquet menu will pop up. Lightroom does offer us five different shapes. You can click through them and you can see the image changing in real time which is quite nice. In this case there aren't that many lights in the background so it might not be that obvious but I think it looks pretty good. And we can also use that boost slider to make the bouquet look a little more interesting if we want to. But that's not all. Besides the blur amount and the bouquet we can also set a focal range. This is very very important for this tool and this tool kind of works like the luminance range mask. In order to make use of it I highly suggest to click on visualize depth which will just give you this overlay over the image. So right here you can see we have this part of the image selected. We can extend this range and thus we are just more precisely targeting areas which should be in focus. This gets very clear looking at this bicycle on the right side. As we bring up the range the bicycle will now be fully in focus while the background didn't change at all. So I want to show you another example because I already found out a real cool use case for this new tool. Let's check out this image. We can actually use lens blur to apply some kind of tilt shift effect. First of course we want to apply it. Again depending on your system this will take a while. With the default settings you can see it looks very very strange with that church tower in the back being out of focus now. However we can manipulate the focal range to get this tilt shift effect. So what we want to do is we want to visualize the depth first and then we want to expand that refine tool right here again clicking on the arrow. Here we basically have two brush tools one for the focus and one for the blur. So I want to add some more blur. I'm going to add this blur on either sides of the image and I just want to create a tilt shift effect. So I want to lay the focus on the center area. Again here we are just painting in the depth map of the image. So those darker purple areas will be out of focus just like this. And now I want to paint in some focus which I want to set right here on that house. Now let's deactivate this depth map. And you can already see how we added this really really good looking tilt shift effect. I can bring up the blur amount so this effect will be more obvious. And again of course we can play around with the bouquet or even play around with the focal range. Let's bring up this point right here until we get something that looks good like this. So you can see that is a really really helpful tool for some creative effects. Lightroom as well as the Camera Raw Editor now come with improved HDR optimization, providing full end-to-end -end HDR workflow from capture to edit and export. Unfortunately I can't report on this feature since it requires an HDR display which I currently don't own.
If you want to learn more about this, I recommend reading Greg Ben's review of this highly promising tool, since he is way more knowledgeable with this topic. Link is in the description. Finally, we have the new point color tool, which you will find in the color mixer panel. It is meant to be used for more precise color adjustments. And it comes with an eyedropper, which you can use to choose a specific color range in an image. So let's say we want to target those brownish orange color tones right about here. We click on it and there are all kinds of things happening. First off, the color we just picked got added as a swatch right here. This means we can add multiple swatches to an image and we can change the colors using the hue shift, saturation shift and luminance shift sliders. So what this means, it's basically like HSL adjustments. We can shift the hue, we can add a little more orange to those brown color tones, we can make it a little less saturated and we can play around with the luminance. Let's see, I think I want to make it a little darker. But just like in the split toning, you could also use those boxes up here and just drag around things. The cool thing is down here you get a comparison. This is what the original color looked like and on the right side you get the new color you just changed. So let's say we want to add another swatch. Grab the eyedropper tool one more time. Let's pick that red color tone right here and I want to make it more saturated. So I'm going to bring up the saturation here. That's quite a bit too much I think. I can also shift the hue again reducing those purple color tones and maybe bring up the luminance. If you want to extend the color range, you also have this range mask and expanding it will give you even more options. And this is the new point color tool. Admittedly, this takes some time getting used to it, but I think this has quite some potential for future edits. So these were the three big Lightroom updates. If you have anything new you also want to add, feel free to post a comment under this video and I hope otherwise this video was interesting and helpful. Thank you so much for watching.